rights and safeguards as everyone else. But is it just another job? Many think it degrades and exploits women and that their clients are no better than sex abusers. So who's right? Heart of the matter asks whether prostitution is a sin or just a steady income. In 1985, have prostitutes' customers been punishable in law when curb crawling was made an offence? Now, certain feminist groups are going further. They think men should be literally taught a lesson. They're setting up schools where curb crawling offenders can go to be re educated. Not surprisingly, some prostitutes resent moves that will put them out of work, claiming theirs is a job like any other. Joining the debate tonight are Julie Bindle, who's the director of the Curb Crawler Rehabilitation Program, Rachel Collins, who's been a prostitute since she was 17. She even has her own website where she describes herself as the happy hooker. Avedon Carroll, who believes that women should be allowed to make up their own minds what they do with their bodies. Chris Tame, who argues that prostitution is an expression of economic freedom and Fiona Broadfoot, herself a former prostitute, who believes that men are at the root of the problem. Tonight, she argues that the law should get tougher on the punters. Tonight, on the streets of cities all over Britain, young girls and women are selling sex. These women know that some of them will be mugged, beaten up, raped, or perhaps even murdered. This is the reality of prostitution, not the pretty woman fantasy. I know. Since the age of 15, I've been involved in prostitution. I used to work here, on this corner in Chapel Town in Leeds. I was an adolescent, and like many adolescents, I ran away from home. I was desperate. Then along came Mr. Wonderful. He looked after me at first and spoiled me. Then I discovered the price. He pimped me. And when I didn't make him enough money, he beat me up and raped me. Sadly, too many people can tell similar stories. Emma Humphreys had already been a prostitute for five years when at the age of 17 she killed a man trying to rape her. She spent the next 10 years in prison. I wanted to know why she became a prostitute so young. I ran away from home when I was 12, and the only way I could guarantee to get a roof over my head was to sleep with a man. Then I met this other girl, and we started doing it for money. What about the idea of the happy hooker? I don't care what anybody says, there's no happy hooker. Three quarters of the women that work the streets are out there, not just because they want to be out there, because they're made to be there. How do you defend a trade that leaves people as damaged as Emma? In the eyes of the law, thousands of women who are out on the streets tonight are common prostitutes, sex offenders. But what about the other half of the equation? The people who buy sex. It takes two to dance this particular tango. But almost all the legislation is aimed at punishing the prostitute. How difficult was life for you on the streets, Emma? Very difficult. There was abuse, rape, muggings. You name it, it happened to me. What sort of men were your clients? Men from all walks of life. Could be a judge, could be a mechanic, 
could be a unemployed bloke. And how do they treat the women? Like a piece of shit. that they're to be bought and sold and... It makes me so angry to think that it was only in 1985 that curb crawling was made an offence, with consequences little more serious than that of a parking fine. But yet every year, thousands of women are prosecuted for soliciting, whilst only a handful of men face charges for curb crawling. But here at Leeds Metropolitan University, we're going to try targeting the user for a change. Welcome to the Leeds Metropolitan University Rehabilitation Programme for Curb Crawlers. What we want to look at is you as men buying sexual services off women, why you do that, why it's a problem, and why you should stop doing that. This is a pilot project for a unique scheme in this country, the Curb Crawler Re-Education Programme. This is a training course. The men are all volunteers standing in as punters. How would you feel if it was your daughter, your sister, your girlfriend, wife? This is where curb crawlers separate prostitutes from real women. Men stopped for curb crawling will be offered the chance to come here for the day instead of appearing in court and being fined. The teachers will be women survivors like me, who will share their personal experiences of the violence, abuse, oppression and degradation they endure for their pleasure. You men think that it's, you know, the women are okay about you invading their bodies. They'll be squirming underneath you actually and feeling physically sick. Men who curb crawl must be made to realise that women are not just sex objects to be bought and then discarded and that the consequences of their actions don't just stop when they drive off. Thank you. You don't actually know what sort of a system you are propping up, what you are doing when you give your money out there on the street. If you had done business with my daughter, every penny of that would have gone to her pimp. She never saw a penny. And you have to face up to your... Irene Iverson's daughter was beaten to death by a punter. She was only 17. The pain and the suffering are such that you cannot imagine, really. And I think you know that the, the worst thing, of course, for me was the fact that my daughter was dead and that she had been murdered. I hadn't known at the time that she had been involved in prostitution in the last three weeks of her life and the police had to actually break that to me. What do you think of the idea of targeting the curb crawler? In San Francisco, where, um, which the scheme is, is modelled upon, uh, it has been very successful with a very low rate of reoffending. I myself would not like to go down the road of legalising prostitution because I do see prostitution as abuse of women. So I think the answer is to look at the demand, to target the demand, to re-educate the men who are using the young girls and the women, like my daughter, so that they will perhaps stop going out onto the street. And if they stop doing that, then we are part way to solving the problem. I was lucky. I managed to escape from prostitution. I was brought to my senses when someone very close to me was murdered at the age of 18 by a punter. I have now dedicated my life to help women get out of prostitution. But until the law and the police stop persecuting the woman and start to focus on the men who perpetuate this trade, the punters, then people like Emma and Fiona Iverson will always be at risk. Rachel Collins, you call yourself the happy hooker. Well, you did, but... <laughs> well, you, uh, you, it's on your website, so what do you make of that film? Um, it's very emotive, but they don't differentiate between the young girls that are forced onto the streets and the adult women who choose to be prostitutes. So how did you come to choose to be a prostitute? Well, I decided, um, when I first started, I was only going to do it for a little while, but I actually um, found I enjoyed the work and I liked the money. 
So I carried on. And I, st I, I tried all different ways of doing it. And then I, I did start off on the street, but I didn't stay on the street for very long. So it was money that made money. you do it? Yeah, but also it's the freedom. I can work one day a week or two days a week and have the rest of um, the week to myself and do what I want. I can spend a lot more time with my kids and still take them on. I have enough money to take them on holidays, buy them what they want. And um, so I mean, don't I don't find it abusive. I control my situation. It depends. If you're an adult, then you can control your situation. If you're a child, then you can't, obviously. And you don't feel abused? No, of course not. I mean, the men, we don't do anything that we don't want to do. It's run by the women um, themselves. We have late monthly meetings and stuff like that. <clears throat> I mean, most other places aren't like that, but um, there's no reason why they don't have to, why they can't be like that. Julie Bindle, what do you say to that? Well, I think you can always find aspects of prostitution that isn't as abusive to women, and I'm not wanting to describe your experience. I don't find experience. it abusive at all. At but all. I, I don't want to... the slightest. No, and, and I've been more abused by boyfriends experience. in my life than by clients. Yes, but it's the institution of prostitution that I'm concerned about as a feminist, and obviously I'm concerned about the men who are perpetuating acts of violence against women who work as prostitutes, but it's, I, I don't think prostitution is just... Wait a minute, let, 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 there no, are I, different I, types, though, I, that's yes, what I'm saying. No, I accept that, to. and I accept that, but I, no. I don't think prostitution is just a problem when there's violence and abuse committed against them. And the women that you saw in Fiona's film, it's true, were extreme examples, and I accept that you're not. But it's the actual act of prostitution where men, men believe they can buy and sell women as a commodity, and where women are somehow told that there are these women that men can act these fantasies out upon, and it stops rape, and it lets them uh, release some sexual uh, energy on. And then there are women who they don't have to do that to. All women matter, and we shouldn't have to say that men can use and abuse any group of women at all. Abbott and Carol, you're oh, a feminist, abused, you're a feminist too. So what's your feminist view? Oh, I, I was very uncomfortable with stereotypes that implied that you could uh, say one thing about all men who, who are clients of prostitutes, for one thing. I mean, I don't know an industry where there aren't abusers. I don't know an industry That's or true. an institution where there the is, isn't abuse. I mean, um, you know, most rape occurs in marriage, as far as we yeah. know. So what about that institution? Mm. You, know, you can't attack an entire industry or in institution because some abuse happens. But yeah. you would seek to eliminate it by the most yes, uh, but effective not by means possible. the entirety of yeah. the industry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, They're why can't Look They're at the coal selective. industry. Look They're at, look at, look but at the industry. But in what other job? I mean, what are the career? It, with know? Avedon, yeah. what, what are the career do you know? What are the job where um, an industrial um, injury or, or hazard is rape, murder, HIV, unwanted pregnancy, uh, or regular se Secretarial beaters. work, um, rape, rape and harassment. I don't think you can like talk about it in the same way on the same level. I'm sorry, level. sexual absolutely harassment not. is part of the job Yes, I'm, I'm not talking about sexual harassment, and uh, I agree with you absolutely, and of course there are other And of course being a housewife. Marriage, no, wait a minute, housewife. Uh, wait a minute, let's have a male voice in this. Now, do you see this as, for women, a job like any other, or do the the male sex see it as really quite a particular kind of job, a job in which they have power over Well, women. I can't speak for the whole male sex no, and these well, sorts of generalizations are one of the That's problems. I mean, it seems to me that the, the trouble with this film is, the, the fact is, the problem of prostitution as it is, is because it's not treated the same as any other service industry. That's if it was properly, because it is, it's a service yeah, it's like any either. other. It it's is. a service like any well, other. Well, let's and, finish what he's saying. And the fact is, if like any service, if you try to, if you try to I make it illegal, it becomes a black market, and then we get the problems. Then we have of, more then problems. Then we get I the real problems. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then we get the real. <laughs> we then get the real problems of, of criminal exploitation yeah. of violence, I have and, and, and prostitutes aren't properly protected Carla. as they should be by the law. Fiona, what do you make of the case that Chris makes that it is a job and you don't have well, to I've do it? Well, I worked in a licensed massage parlour. It was run by a man, and if you didn't do certain things without a condom, you got sacked. What do you feel about this allegation that the whole structure of the institution is degrading to women? No, I think it depends. If you give the power to the women involved, right, the actual prostitutes to run their own places, if they're not um, like victimized by the, the police and um, by the housing laws and all the rest of it, then they'd be able to run places as clean and, I mean, we have to have the choice what we do. We can't there's no way that a prostitute should be told that they've got to do something they don't want to do. do you know I mean, it, where I work, nobody does anything they don't want to do. But suppose you have a punter who wants you to do something extremely dangerous. Well, you wouldn't do it. You'd tell him no. And if the laws were different, we'd be able to employ a doorman. Okay, you know I mean? but Julius. If he's a pimp, he wouldn't be allowed to, we wouldn't be allowed to employ a doorman. Now, your campaign mm. to try and get curb crawlers to give up going to mm. prostitutes is depriving her of her living. Well, I don't think that we can look at it like that simply because what you have to do is look at the institution of prostitution, not of individual rights of some prostitutes who say, I love it, it's my job, it's a job like any other. I'm not saying that Rachel doesn't enjoy her job. What I'm suggesting is that the whole industry 
makes men and women into a particular um, it, it makes men look at women as if they are pieces of meat, as was said in the film. And you can't deny that if you have women bought and sold as a commodity, and you're talking about women and children, and you're talking about men being able to give a woman a £20 note to do something that he would be arrested for doing to another woman, then you can't say that that's actually going to say... I, 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 I want to hear what Avedon uh, says about the uh, feminist argument that um, it is in fact exploiting women if you can just buy their body and have you it... You can't buy their bodies any more than, than any other employer is buying your body. Yeah. An employer buys your time and your services. And that means, in most cases, your body has to be there to do the job, whether it's <laughs> typing or anything else. You know, I mean, I have skills, um, some of which are much more intimate than sexual skills, my, my intellectual skills, for example, which I get paid for. Um, and yeah. I have to be there to do it in every bit as much as if I was having sex with somebody. It's still a service, a job that you're doing with, yes, your body and maybe your mind, if, if you're capable but of engaging But it isn't a mind, job quite <laughs> like any other. It, it is the sexual invasion of your body, isn't if it? Like you perceive typing. it that way, I'm sure it is. But, you know, well, I mean, I, you just I'm sorry, I, I, job, feel, you know I, I mean? feel very, very it's demoralized when I'm, I'm working in a building and I'm sitting in front of a, a keyboard and even though what I'm doing is writing or editing, very often guys walk in, they don't know the difference between me and a secretary, and they immediately start very insulting behavior. They demand uh, that I get them coffee. You know, and I think, what's it like for the secretaries who work there if men, complete strangers, walk in and they see a woman and think I can, I can just snap my fingers and... No, you see, what I would probably to me, prostitution just no, perpetuates no, that to, kind to of... to me, that uh, comes society. Yeah, that's anyway. Anyway. Okay, okay, anyway. okay, okay you've had your turn. I want to know w in what sense you're absolutely convinced that it's it's different from sexual harassment, it's different from of uh, any it kind is. of... I, you know, you could is get it because it's invasive of your body? Not just because it's invasive of your body. I mean, now I, I can't get a job because I'm a sex offender. I can't work with children well, right, because, because, because I'm, because I'm, because I'm, I'm charged with a sex offense. Yeah, Men get done wrong. with a public order offense. The balance of prostitution so is all right. Okay, okay, anyway. okay you've had your turn. Chris, can I pick it up with you? This question of the school re-educating curb crawlers. Do you think that's a perfectly good option to, having, uh, to pay a fine and why not? Do you think it would be effective? Well, first, I think it's an absurdly utopian fancy, fantasy to believe that you can suppress any demand for services by the law, whether it's drugs, pornography, or prostitution. This is simply a fantasy. And the problem here is, the problem, the whole prostitution issue is precisely criminalizing the activities, whether it's criminalizing the prostitute or whether it's criminalizing the purchaser of the service, the punter. You want it we all want to be legal. The, 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 the law should be the same for prostitution as it is for any other legitimate business service. But Chris, interestingly enough, we're actually not criminalizing the men, we're di diverting them from court. But you are criminalizing them. Excuse me, them. we're diverting them from court. So they you will, can Excuse me, can I finish? they will not have a criminal record. If they go to court, which they normally do now if they're apprehended, they will have a caution against them. If they come on our curb crawling rehabilitation program, they will not have a criminal record. It's all about re-education, not feminazi tactics, not criminalization. It's actually about re-educating people because men are not born bad and women are not born victims. And that's what I firmly believe. So you can re-educate people out of their abusive behavior and tell them what it's really like. Now, what the life of prostitutes can really be like. I, think I want to talk to Fiona now for a moment because you set out that your view very strongly and you feel very passionately about it, but you were a prostitute. Now, they always say that people converted from one side of an argument to the other are the most passionate about wanting to convert the rest of the world. And I wonder whether you aren't over-passionately committed to putting Rachel out of work when she doesn't want to be converted. No, because I think that, you know, Rachel will go on working and there'll, be, there'll never be anything done about that. She'll have a flat and, you know, they, they, they complain that they can't work safely and all the rest of it. Well, you know, they, they do it. It happens in millions of brothels every day. What I want to focus on is um, educating society, preventing our children from growing up to think that it's okay to go and, and use a woman like she's a piece of meat and, and, and for young women to end up having to suffer abuse, rape, violence on the streets because that's often where the problems lie. But when you see rape and violence are already against the law uh, wherever they occur. Mm -hmm. So you've got those laws protecting you. Yeah, but unfortunately when you're a prostitute it's, it, it's almost like, you know, you've, it's an added risk. It's just, a, 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 you know, 
one of the um, dangers of the job. Rachel, you wouldn't recommend it as a way of life, would you? It wouldn't not be your for, first No, choice. for me, it suits me. I'm not saying it should suit anybody else. It suits me, and I know that um, I'm good at what I do, and it's something that I think is undervalued. People don't realise that the skills that I hold are important. I can teach people all kinds of things that, that they need to know in their relationships, and e even just for their own um, well-being, they need to know certain What's things about that? sex, and it's, it's undervalued. Yeah. I'm not arguing with you about that. I'm not suggesting that all prostitutes suffer the same abuses as street prostitutes. And I'm not suggesting that your life is hell. What I'm saying is that the value oh, system that sets up men to buy women as commodities All women to buy men, wrong. presumably. Yes, but we know, that we know that the vast... It's, look, if you're talking about it as a service, as you did earlier, Avedon, when you, when you described it um, in analogy with, with uh, being a typist, why is it then that the majority of typists aren't hooked on some kind of heroin, alcohol, self-harming? Why is it that, that a lot of prostitutes and the prostitutes I've cliche. worked with who get out of yeah. prostitution and who feel able to tell the truth about it, why is it then... And, no, I, and I, think that that's, that I think that that's trite in the extreme. Right. I don't think it's funny being addicted to heroin. But why is it then that women have to dissociate to the point of where they're not really there? You talk about taking your body into work when you're a typist. Many prostitutes will leave their bodies and minds behind. Well, things are, as usual, different in Holland. Prostitution is treated as a fact of life there, and brothels are openly tolerated. Now their government has put forward plans to legalise the trade, giving prostitutes the same rights as any other workers, while at the same time strengthening the laws against forced prostitution. Dutch attitudes to sex have always been more permissive than ours. Gerrit Blumen from Amsterdam regularly uses prostitutes there and wants people to be sympathetic to the views of the punters. Gerrit, you go to prostitutes. Do you go regularly? Yeah, I, on a quite regular basis. It's part Once of a week is uh, quite normal for me. Why do you go? Um, well, uh, that, uh, that uh, during the years, I do it already 25 years. Uh, uh, first, it was a curiosity. Then I was fascinated by it. And now it's uh, just uh, a way of uh, love life, in, in a way. It has nothing, not, nothing really to do with love, but uh, of living my sexuality. Don't you want your sexuality to be associated with love in any way? Of course, but uh, since I'm uh, one of the few people who uh, are coming uh, out for uh, their uh, activities, uh, I'm not a very um, popular uh, friend, you know. Girlfriends, you mean? Yeah, I for girlfriends, yes. So you can't get girlfriends because they no, know... No, 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 but it's a problem. It's a problem, of course. I always say, uh, maybe I once get lucky with an, with an ex-prostitute. Or maybe a prostitute. That's no problem for me. How do you think the education program to reform curb court? I am very much uh, for education, but I, I think that it should, should be a broader education and it should be an erotic education. I mean, our society is so anti-eros, uh, it's really horrible. I mean, it's, it's a human right to touch a person and to be touched by a person. You are touched by your mother. You touch your loved ones. But isn't money now doesn't I'm come into alone. it. Yes. Uh, I, okay, I have my cat. And I, uh, she gets now and then she gets a stroke or, or, or I get a paw. But once in a week, I like to touch in an intimate way a nice girl. But so I get there. But uh, they have also a good sitting room. It's warm there, uh, and they get uh, they can get food, and uh, they can uh, shower themselves. Uh, it's it's quite good, really. I have to ask you, what moral standards do you have if you're an ex? -Catholic? I have no moral standards. It's just respect for other other people. That's so that's the only moral standard I think you can have. And you define it for yourself? You don't accept the no, moral standards in, in of your... No, in contact children. with the other. The other has his uh, um, standards and I have my standards, and so we have to, to discuss about it. You say you're alone, but suppose you were a married man, married men use prostitutes, and suppose you had a daughter. Would you mind if your no wife problem. and daughter... Were no problem. You wouldn't mind? No problem. That's as tolerant as you can get. Well, I, won't, I don't know. You, could, you would be quite happy about that. You don't feel... No, if she's happy with it, I'm happy with it.
Joining this part of the debate is Safdar Bhatt, who organized resident patrols against prostitutes and their clients in his area of Birmingham, and Nick Davis, who believes the growing gap between rich and poor is forcing more and more women onto the streets. Satar Bhatt, you were part of a movement to drive prostitutes off the streets of your part of Birmingham. So what attitude do you take to this issue now? Our attitude is, well, I'm not against the prostitution as such. It's the individual right, what they want to do with themselves. But I don't want them peddling their gear in front of my doorstep, where my office is, anywhere at all, and influence the society. At the same time, we were having problems because the curb car will come, they're pestering our young girls on the street. No woman, respectable woman, could walk on the streets day or night. And uh, when we found that, when, when we got really fed up with it, all we did was just came out on the street. We didn't say anything to the prostitutes. We didn't say anything to the pimps or the drug dealers. We just stood there in our own streets, in our own streets corner, and they just went away. You repossessed your streets? We reclaimed, not repossessed, reclaimed our streets. Nick Dark, what do you make about this whole discussion about what has always been a subculture and seems to be getting more extensive. It is getting much more extensive and the reason for that is a clue to what's going on within it. The reason it's got so much bigger is because of poverty and it may be that someone like Rachel has freely consented to that activity as a career but the real fact of what's going on on the streets of this country is that thousands of women and thousands of children, terribly important to remember that, have been pushed out onto the streets into this business by poverty and, and sometimes by the emotional damage which growing up in poverty has done to them. So these are not, 99% of the women I met when I was researching this book, Dark Heart, about poverty, were not free, were, were not uh, exercising any kind of control over their lives in the way that Rachel describes. They were absolute victims and the harassment that he and his neighbours suffered is tenfold worse for the prostitutes and the children themselves who are working on the street. Now, if, you, if we were to have, as in Holland, a, a situation that formalised and approved and licensed prostitution, what difference would that make to the situation that you've observed? Well, the first point to notice is that's completely different from what Chris was suggesting earlier on. Decriminalising it would allow in all of the pimps and all of the crazy punters, and his, his allowing the market to take over would be a real recipe for disaster. What happens in Amsterdam is different. That's regulating it. And if you regulate effectively, you can mitigate the damage. You can remove the pimps. You can possibly remove the crack cocaine, which is another huge and terribly destructive feature of prostitution in this country. But still, there's something left. Which I, When he was describing how comfortable the prostitutes he knows are, it struck me it's rather like a battery hen. There's the hen. She's warm. She's well fed. The fox can't get in. The pimp can't get in. But still there's something wrong, isn't there? That's not what a chicken's life is supposed to be. That's not what a woman's life is supposed to be. And if you dig deep enough, if you ask yourself, for example, if you didn't have a friend, would it be enough to go and pay somebody to pretend to be your friend? Just take the sex out of it. There's something about humanity that's missing there in that relationship. What do you say to that, Chris? Well, you see, there's two levels to the, to the discussion of morality here. There's, firstly, the one key ele element of morality is actually letting people be free, which is actually means free to make sometimes immoral and foolish decisions, you know, which, as long as they don't actually uh, uh, create force against other people. So there's one aspect, people must be left free. That is, that is an essence of morality. But nobody's 100% free, are they? They uh, need to be clothed, housed, uh, they need to obey the law of the land. Oh, so, certainly, I'm talking about law lawful liberty, yeah, the, the, the rule of law. Um, we had an attack on the free market. The fact is, free markets are the best way we know of running, running economies, they're the best way of producing goods and services. The idea that bringing in a proper free market will create havoc is not true. The fact is, a proper free market will enable the proper law of the land to be enforced. Well, we don't have a free market in drugs, for of, example. Well, no, we should do, and that's precisely why we have a, have a very bad drug problem, because all the problems of drugs are precisely because they're illegal. So, no, I mean, the free market is not the problem. We need a free market. That's the solution. But back to the moral issue again. You see, we keep coming back here to the idea that everyone is the same. Everyone shares the same morality. Um, well, they don't. They simply don't. Um, the idea Perhaps they that, should. That, um, um, well, that's something we might want to discuss. I think not. I think one of the essence of morality is precisely to allow a variety of moralities. Can I ask and you to Chris? enforce morality yeah. upon people, especially the anti-feminist, anti-sexual morality. Well, it's, it's a criminal. And it only are makes we things bad. Are you, you, what, are you enforcing you, a morality? Can, whether you believe that a free choice in an open market can be made by somebody who's addicted either to heroin or crack cocaine and is so desperate to get money to feed that habit, they'll do anything, anything at all. They'll sleep with an animal if you pay them money. Mm. 
Is that free choice? Yes, are you yeah, happy for that they, to be They exercised? are making a free choice. I mean, you, you firstly can't see you that make a lost free, their free will in there. Well, no, well first, firstly, there is no drug which, which people oh. can't get off. Mm -hmm. uh, addiction does not destroy free will. There's, there's a voodoo concept of addiction here. Addiction does not destroy free will. Um, but even if it did, even if you make an irrevocable decision, well, that's one aspect of free choice. Lots of decisions in our lives are irrevocable. Garrett. Yeah, but the, the point I want to make is that uh, you're right that the street prostitution is the hardest form of prostitution. Mm -hmm. um, Children, uh, it's terrible, isn't it? Well, that is impossible in Holland. I, I, I can assure you that it's really impossible. So you don't make the connection that Nick sees absolutely in the economic nature of the free society driving the very desperate to even de more desperate remedies. You, that you don't feel that I analysis see, uh, applies. With us, I see a trend that, um, that there are more girls uh, getting off the streets. Uh, you, 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 the the, the, the heroin-addicted girls, uh, don't you see uh, so much since uh, about uh, seven, eight years? Where what about Fiona? Fiona, Fiona would tell At the moment, it's increasing in this country. We, um, yeah. I, I work around um, girls on the streets, with girls on the streets. And uh, I'd say 70% of them are using heroin, crack cocaine, <coughs> and 70% of them come into prostitution when they're but 11, my 12, point 13. Is I, I'd always like to talk about it's prostitution in to general. Be on heroin I or mean, crack. the escort but, girl. But the, uh, where do your Dutch prostitutes come from? More and more of them come from Eastern Europe. Why have they travelled from Eastern Europe to Amsterdam? Because they're poor. They're desperate for money. Isn't that right? I, I've interviewed prostitutes in Amsterdam, Czech girls, Hungarian well, girls, they are Polish girls. I, I, that's not an can, adventure. Can, that's can I just sorry, 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 can I sorry. Yeah, I want to ask that, I want to ask after a moment point because that Nick raises. Nick said, not however we discuss it, there's something uneasy about the very idea. And I wonder if you coming from a strong Islamic culture don't feel that there's something in man's nature that says that it is wrong. Well, uh, I don't know about the man's nature, but the God's uh, commands are in Bible, Torah, or Quran. It is a bad thing. It's clearly forbidden there. Uh, coming back to this uh, my, my point uh, Nick has made about this um, uh, poverty, there is a part. Part is poverty. Mm -hmm. Part is greed, yeah, to mm -hmm. make more money. Uh, coming back to a point my friend made on Chris. my right hand mm -hmm. side, Chris made on this uh, 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 liberty and freedom and this and that. If you want to live in a society, you want to be free, you got to abide by the laws of the society. The laws of society don't permit you to do whatever you want to do because there's a certain code of conduct laid down by the society. For instance, you go to a club, you got club membership rules. You break the rules, you throw you out. You want that kind of liberty, market forces, then stay out of the society, don't contaminate the society with your kind of liberty because that does not suit the society. You By can't have way, absolutely... No, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you, you, you've, you've moved to a market society which is uh, uh, one of the most prosperous in the world and it's market forces which create prosperity um, and you should be very, feel very lucky you're living in a market society uh, rather than trying to destroy that market society with religious intolerance and, but and Chris, coercion. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Naked, naked, I did well, not bring the religious intolerance. What sorry, but you are. You you wait wait you are religious. Religious. Can, I, can I just bring you back? I want, to, I want to bring you back to the point they, they that Nick... Too. Garrett, listen. I want to bring you back to the point that Nick raised, which is this basic unease, which is almost a primitive hatred of the idea, and it's in the Bible, that the woman who is taken for money debases herself in the society. Now, do you see any of that, Chris, at all in, in well, life? Well, a lot of people share that view, and, a lot of, and some feminists will argue that's actually a sort of patriarchal... Uh, and very oppressive view, which is imposed upon women, and it's a way of actually destroying economic opportunity for but women. But you think it exists, um, and you think it's oh, powerful. It, it, it exists, and it's powerful. But also, there are lots of strands of thought which see uh, exchange relationships. In fact, see all relationships in terms of exchange, whether we're whether we're bartering, so to speak, spiritual services, spiritual goods for for, for, for other spiritual goods, or whether we're bartering money for spiritual goods. Nick. It's got nothing to do with sex. There was a program on television a few weeks ago about a male prostitute in Melbourne in Australia. And the same applies to him and, and his punters. It's really from the punter's point of view. These women are going out looking for a man. 
And what they end up with is the hollowed out image of a man. They're not having a genuine human relationship because it's corrupted by commerce. No, that's your view. Your view that, that, is, is, that commerce is not a genuine human relationship. But I think commerce is a genuine human relationship. And the fact is, people don't always want to have sex and love no, together. No, no, no. I agree with you. Gareth, it's also, we don't have to like the obligations. A sexual service. I see nothing immoral in that. There are two different propositions. No love, no things like that. No strings attached. Let me reply. Sex. There are, there are two different propositions here. One is whether it's okay to have sex without love. I would say yes. I, I've always been in favor of promiscuity. The other is whether when you buy the sex, when you buy the relationship, that commercial uh, uh, transaction. transaction itself doesn't in some way corrupt and change the relationship. And I'm saying it's that that causes the damage. Well, Fiona. Fiona. Yeah, I, I agree with what Chris has just said. Um, it, we, we can all get sex wherever we want to get sex. There's, you know, that's not a problem. But to actually buy it is, you know, it's slightly different. Um, I'd like, oh, to, I'd like to take up a point minute. that um, you made about vigilantes. Um, I call them vigilantes. I've experienced, not personally, but I've seen the women and um, the violence they suffered, um, gang rapes, um, the, the vicious attacks, and it was the easy, it was the easy access for the woman. You know, it, they never challenged the man. We never challenge the demand. You moved no. it on to somebody else's um, no. area and no, made it no. somebody no. else's thing, problem. Thing is, you, there was a lot of violence. Those girls were not from local Walsall Heath area. They were coming from Walsall, Manchester, as far as Bradford. What it is that we didn't want them on our streets coming out from outside and selling their sex. Selling their well, sex what sex you're sex. saying is you don't mind having your... No, no. What you do behind your closed door, you're free to do whatever you want to do behind your door. But don't contaminate you're standing on the street. Don't sell your bodies. Now, what Chris has been saying about the market forces taking over, it is coming back to the... We, well, uh, uh, slavery was abolished probably in the later part of the 18th century, and that's bringing in the slavery again. I mean, you're selling slavery. your bodies, slavery. slavery. You are, you, it is a slavery, you're selling your body to gain something. There you are selling people in the market forces to gain the money. This remains a moral issue about the commercial situation. Yeah, but there's also an important point here. I would have thought we all agree that the current version of prostitution we have in this country is the worst of all possible yeah. worlds. Sure, yeah. sure. Wh whether you decriminalize it or you regulate it. And one of the worst aspects of it is that there's a kind of escalator effect. Whereas 10 or 15 years ago, prostitutes were selling straight sex and a little bit of oral sex. In the brothels in the West End of London now, they sell violence, violence to themselves. Men go there to beat the women up. And the most frightening single statistic I came across when I was researching this book was how the price of whipping a woman has fallen. It now costs only £10 a stroke, whereas 20 years ago it was an extremely expensive thing to do because the supply of desperate young women being pulled into this mushrooming industry has got so great that supply has beaten demand and the price has dropped. You say the British system is the worst. How have we got ourselves into this dilemma? We pride ourselves on a certain priggishness about sex. Oh, but it's the priggishness that's the problem because they never debated it and confronted it. So, I mean, you, you could move it up several steps. I mean, ultimately, I still insist that a, a decent world doesn't involve women being compelled uh, into prostitution in any way. To whether it's regulated or decreased. I mean, it's not part bodies, yeah. of, a, of a good society. But. Uh, as, as a halfway house, I, I would say the Dutch model is better. At least it's regulated. You mitigate some of the damage. You take out the crack. You take out the pimps. But still, it's wrong. And the debate goes on. Esther, tomorrow afternoon, talks prostitution. Another view at 5 to 5 on BBC Two.